See, before you go further in this knowledge, I just want to give you a story to illustrate <laughs> few points. Hmm. You must understand the power of your attention and the power of mindfulness. Then only I can go into the techniques of meditation. Kal jab, jab aap meditation karoge, you will understand its relevance to your life. See, the story is like this. It is the story of a Japanese samurai and a young monk, a Japanese Buddhist monk. So, samurai aapko pata hai? Hmm? Samurai, in, see in feudal Japan, there used to be those wo warrior, uh, some, some of them were monks also, monk warriors sort of, who uh, were very well trained in martial arts. So, now this samurai was, he was not a monk, he was just trained in, well trained in the martial arts and he could fight very well. So, he is also a young man and then there is a young monk who not very well trained in the martial arts, but very, very concentrated, uh, very beautiful personality. So, once this samurai came and challenged the people of a village that anybody can fight with me. <laughs> if you can fight with me, I will know that you people have some substance. I do not think anybody in this village can fight with me. So, the Zen master there sent this young monk, hmm? you go and answer him. So, the young monk went and said, yes, we can fight with you, but we prefer not to because we are non-violent people. Then he said, no, no, you show me, if you can fight, show me that you can fight. So, then this young monk also stood and the samurai also stood. Hmm? Now, please see the, this, that samurai is a much older person uh, and he is a, a fighter. He knows his job very well and he knows he is an expert at martial arts and this is just a young monk, some uh, uh, 18, 20 years old, who has mastered the art of attention. So, both of them, now the first fight is about sword, sword fighting. Hmm? Now, this monk does not have experience, that person has so much of experience. So, a, all the crowd, the whole village had gathered and all the club crowd was actually cheering the young monk, but he did not have experience. So, many of them uh, subconsciously they thought that he will lose, where is he compared to the samurai. But you know this monk had learnt his lessons very well. Although he did not have expertise with uh, sword fighting, he had learnt what his guru had told him very well. And his guru had told him, see my son, if you want to know what is in the other person's mind or even what action he is going to perform, you must first empty your mind. You know, there is something called being mindful and being mindful. <laughs> Just now our mind is full, full to the brim, all sorts of things. Isko agar khali kar do na thoda, you remove the clutter, you will become mindful automatically which means you will start living in the present moment and you will become deeply aware. Mindful ka matlab hai, only thoughts are going on, uncontrolled. Koi awareness nahi hai waha par. This is default state for most youngsters. Mind is full. But if you become mindful, then what will happen? Whatever is happening in other minds will reflect in your mind. So, you will know what your opponent wants to do automatically. Hmm? The young monk remembered standing there. His teacher had told him, look my son, if you only focus on the sword, you will get carried away by the sword. If you only focus on the opponent, his eyes and his anger and his fury will carry away your mind. You will get the same emotions within you. If you focus on his feet, his, the swiftness of his feet will carry away your, your mind. But if you empty your mind, you will not be carried away by anything. And what the other person is thinking or wants to do will reflect in your mind and you will know what to do. Are you get, catching this point? If you empty your mind, your mind will reflect what, what is in front of you perfectly because it has become mindful. Mindful, not mindful. 
and it will reflect what is going on perfectly and you will know what to do. So, he had learned this lesson well. So, he was full of mindfulness. That other fellow was full of ego, mindful. So, both clashed and in a matter of 5 minutes, the young monk defeated him. Not because he was an expert at martial arts, because he was mindful. This is the power of attention. If you have an uncluttered mind, do you know how much you can achieve? If you have a cluttered mind, how little you can achieve? If you know that, that at least that much, you will know how an uncluttered mind, how much you can achieve. You must learn to empty mind periodically. This is what meditation techniques are about. Aap jaise refresh button press karte ho na in your apps. Like that, something like that. Man, man bhi ek app hai. <coughs> mind is a ma app. You must refresh it from time to time. And the cleaner, you must run the cleaner. Otherwise, all sorts of files will get accumulated, viruses will get accumulated and then it won't function. So, usi ke liye meditation techniques hain. That is the refresh button. So, you will renew your energies, you will renew your attention when you refresh. Isi liye meditation techniques says. You see this monk won not because of his expertise, but because of his awareness because of his mindfulness. So, do not think intelligence means being mindful. Intelligence means being mindful. So, you must learn the art of mindfulness. There are various techniques to it. Aapne vipassana suna hai na? It is generating mindfulness through concentration of on breath. Like this, there are various ways of generating mindfulness. I am now going to give you a list of techniques. Aap dekho kitna kuch treasure hai in our spiritual heritage by which you can remain in charge of yourself. You do not have to be carried away by this and that. So, let me show you the techniques such an enormous, only small bit I have put here, aur bhi bahut kuch hai. See, these are the techniques of meditation available to you. In the Vedic period, the main techniques, I have put them here. You see, Nididhyasan. Nididhyasan ka matlab hai, the Vedic meditation technique. Shravan, Manan, Nididhyasan. Nididhyasan, what you hear, that you must think again and again and you must meditate on it. Us meditation ko Nididhyasan kehte the. And there were various types of meditation given. See, today you are hearing about this, all this. If you think about it repeatedly when you go to your room, it will be manan. But if you sit quietly for 5 minutes and try to bring this knowledge into your mind, it is nididhyasan. So, isko thoda sa practice karna hai. This will help you digest the information that you are constantly taking in. Otherwise, I told you, no, over cluttered mind, it will do anything just like that. It will become impulsive. So, Nididhyasan is a practice to do this. First, you get acquainted with the practices, then second is Neti Neti. See, this was actually meant for self-knowledge. Iska matlab hai, man se, aap jo nahi ho, usko nikal dena. Are you the cloth you are wearing? No. Are you the object in your pocket, your mobile and uh, no. It is your object, but you are not the object, is not it? Hmm? And are you your spectacles? Are you? No. Uh, you are your t-shirt? No. Then like that only, your, your body? You are wearing the body, by, why you know it is an object of your perception? If you are the body, how it could be object to you? My logic is correct or wrong? If something is object of your perception, <laughs> it is object. So, which means you are different from it. You can also objectify your thought. Man mein ab kya ho hai? 
you can find out which means you are separate even from the mind hai ki nahi am i right which means body and mind also are objects to you objects of your experience aap identify kar lete ho wo alag baat hai but the fact of your experiences they are perfect objects to your perceptions body you can your objectify and study medical science wahi hai na hmm? mind you objectify and study psychological sciences are that only so then who are you if you are not body and mind if they are objects of your perception to aap kaun ho neti neti yahi process hai i am not this i am not this i am not this when you keep doing this you come to iti then i that means i am apart from that i am something else finally it will boil down to pure awareness i am only self aware that is the fundamental experience of life uske baad aata hai my thinking my emoting my willing my attaching usse uske baad aata hai ye sab fundamental experience of every human being is i am aware is awareness ko pakadna hai so neti neti is the process to do that i am not the body i am not the mind i am not the objects i am not my perceptions i am not my memories i am not my emotions however nice it may be i am not that i am not my anger i am not my resentment i am not my love i am not my joy then who am i you will finally come to i the awareness i am experiencing all this in my mental firmament it is an object of my experience object is not subject isn't it are you getting my point see these are all classic vedantic techniques for you to understand your own real nature aise thought process se aap samajh sakte ho what is my real nature then you know when thought is very bad gloomy hmm? <laughs> negative thinking kar rahe ho and then it will automatically deplete your energy so you feel very bad that time you should practice this and say am i that thought thought is mine but i am not the thought jaise t-shirt is you your t-shirt you are wearing is yours but you are not the t-shirt like that your thoughts are yours but you are not the thought you are thinking those thoughts because you have conditioned yourself like that to thoda usse distance karke dekho apne aap it is a perfect object of your perception your cognition so then you will understand only awareness i am not of what yahi to baat hai not awareness of something pure awareness just being you are pure awareness which does not have to be aware of something in yourself self awareness is what defines you but in that when a thought process comes in you feel you must become aware of something to be there aisi baat nahi hai apne cogito ergo sum suna hai cogito ergo sum it's a it's a huge theory decart's postulation that i i am only when i think is this true suppose you are not thinking tab aap ho ya nahi ho when you are not thinking ab dekho kal hum meditation practice karenge i'll put you into the state of shunya empty mind that time you must only tell me whether you are still there or you are not there at all <laughs> what i'm telling you is whether thought is there or not whether emotion is there or not you are there you are right there mr don't worry your awareness is always there thought can come and go isiliye to ye practices hain neti neti is disidentifying with what you are not so that you remain as what you always are you are pure being yahi vedanta hai pure consciousness usi ko atma vastu kehte hain you are that self 
हिंदी में बोलना बहुत डिफिकल्ट है बिकॉज इफ आई यूज द वर्ड आत्मा आप वो अशरीरी आत्मा सोचने लगेंगे घोष्ट सोचने लगेंगे वो बात नहीं है वो अलग चीज है आत्मा का मतलब है सैंस्क्रिट में हमारे वैदिक लिटरेचर में द कोर ट्रूथ अबाउट योर एग्जिस्टेंस योर ओन कॉन्शियसनेस प्योर कॉन्शियसनेस दैट इज कॉल्ड द आत्मन आत्मा वस्तु है वो सो यू आर दैट फंक्शनिंग थ्रू अ बॉडी माइंड कॉम्प्लेक्स विथ अ लिटिल थिंकिंग यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दिस यू आर नॉट योर थॉट वो ड्यू टू योर कंडीशन मेंटल मैकेनिज्म इट इज गोइंग ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन उसका मतलब ये नहीं कि आप वो हो चेक दिस आउट एन सी ओके ये सब एक्सपेरिमेंट्स थॉट एक्सपेरिमेंट्स हैं चेक आउट फॉर योर सेल्फ कल आके डाउट्स पूछना ठीक है ही हैज बिकम वेरी कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड एंड वेरी वेरी अलर्ट ठीक है करके दिखाओ और नेक्स्ट क्लास में पूछ लेना Yes, distance yourself and see for yourself. Do you remain over when you are distanced from the thought process? Find out and tell me. I've actually done that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Then what did you find? I saw it on Google. It's a mental illness. Some it's a mental illness. Some people dissociate from all their experiences. They no, no. Them. See, if you do it yogically, you do it as it is done in meditation. you will find that whether there is a thought or no thought in your mind you as awareness are always there any one of you do you ask the question uh main yahan hu ya nahi pata nahi aisa kabhi puchte ho sochte ho aisa hum hamesha hai why you are awareness in your awareness through a thought process you identify with body mind objects senses everything but self awareness is fundamental find out for yourself if this is true or not ye koi aapko convince nahi kar sakta aapke upar impose nahi kar sakta because it is your own experience which escapes your confused mind find out for yourself you are very capable of it hmm but you must do it with a little yoga practice i am telling you because mind should be stable to conduct an inquiry like this if mind is morose depressed or uh, very unstable you will not get the right answer are you getting it hmm? so this is one another next method neti neti which means not this not this i am not this not this so then you will remain over as what you truly are ye method hai then there are vidyas vidyas are vedic meditations which which are very beautiful actually there are a number of vidyas like madhu vidya akshar vidya shandilya vidya each is a meditation of the realization of some rishi ek rishi ne jo uh, experience paya uske uh, through his meditation if you meditate on that experience you will get the same experience like for example in madhu vidya the rishi has experienced everything is pouring dripping with bliss he madhuvidya yahi kehti hai ki the sky is bliss the ocean is bliss the waters are bliss the vegetation is bliss these animals around me are bliss these trees are dripping bliss each grass is dripping with bliss because he has awakened to the supremely blissful state ab age agar humko wo same experience chahiye you just have to meditate on this madhuvidya and something of that you will catch ye dusre universities mein bhi is par practices we have put that you meditate on this and you will get something of that see wh- how beautiful must be that state of mind where you are feeling everything is dripping bliss yahi cheez hai vidyas are like this very powerful techniques today we have lost a large part of this literature only because this did not come to you ek do generation agar ye go out of touch with this you will lose that bit of knowledge so now you have to reverse the gear and come back and understand this this very profound knowledge about your own being kisi ke bare mein research nahi hai kisi vastu ke bare mein research nahi hai apne aap par research hai so you have to do this at least understand what they, how profound it is what they are trying to say then you see there is mantra meditations in the vedic age vedon ke jo uh, whatever you find in the vedas are themselves called mantras 
What is a mantra? Rhythm. Rhythm. Yes, actually mantra means mananath trayate iti mantra, which means jisko bar bar sochne se ya repeat karne se jo liberate karta hai man ko. That is a mantra. It is an insight which a rishi gets, which becomes a mantra. Agar aap ek cheez ko first person mein pakad lo, means by yourself you realize something. It will become like a mantra to you th that this is the law of existence here. Physics ke kitne laws hai na, they are insights into the nature of physical existence. These are insights into the nature of human existence, about life, about consciousness. This is that is why this is science, science of consciousness. So, mantras are powerful. Aap uspar meditate karke, you can get the experience of the Rishi. This is this med meditation. So, Gayatri mantra hai, aap karte ho na? Many of you are saying yes. So, you see why we do Gayatri mantra? Upana and Sarimani jab hota hai, tab Gayatri mantra diya jata hai. Why do we do it? Because the experience of the Rishi who gave out that mantra should become our experience. That experience is one of awakening of the awaken my higher intelligence that I may know your nature, you who illumine the three worlds. This is the prayer of Gayatri. Om Bhur Bhuvaswa Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhiyo Yona Prachodayat. Dhiyo Yona. Give me that intelligence by which I can know your supreme being which illumines this universe. Gayatri Mantra ke upar talk hai, aap dekh sakte ho, YouTube mein. It was also given here. We did a practical on Gayatri here. You know, ek course mein, panch courses diya hai mene abhi tak. In one course, we did Gayatri here. Each and every student did it. They were so interested. Because Gayatri is a mantra for higher intelligence. So that your intelligence does not remain stupid. It's a, uh, it's, it's your actual prayer. जिसको मंत्र आकार में आपको दिया गया है, इसीलिए उपनयन सेरिमनी में देते हैं, so that your intelligence starts sparkling after that. Eight, ten years it is given. So uh, this is man, regarding mantras. Mantras are very powerful. आजकल ये मंत्र वर ना बहुत common हो गया, सभी को मंत्र बोलते हैं. Don't take it like that. When it is being used in this sense, it is something very valuable. It is an insight into the nature of existence. So, it is valuable to human life. You must pay it that respect. So, this is regarding mantra meditations in the Vedas. Then there are inquiry based meditations. I told you, no, Vedanta means existential inquiry. Trying to logically discern the nature of human existence. This is Vedanta, existential inquiry. It is not some uh, abracadabra. <laughs> It is very scientific. Many baut sare upanishads baut choti umre se pade hain. And I am telling you, it is one of the most logical processes to super fine higher experiences. It is scientific. Koi belief system nahi hai yahan par. See, they do not ask you to believe something. They do not ask you to be like this or like that. It is not a, a kind of dogma or a doctrine. It is not a belief system, it is not a faith, it is a way of life because it is existential inquiry, trying to understand the nature of your own existence. This is Vedanta and all the meditations that is why are inquiry based, not faith based. Believe karne ko nahi kare, do not worry. So, you see Koham, ab ye pehla meditation jo hai Koham, it is inquiring who am I? Don't you want to know who you are? <laughs> Every one of us wants to know. Who am I? Is par meditation ko koham kehte hain. Raman Marshi jo karte the, suna hai na naam? Are, if you have not read Raman Marshi, you don't know what you are missing. Isi liye mein kehti hu, keep some of this literature in your room. Vivekananda ke chote chote books available hain. Please, unko ghar, kamre mein rakhna. 
the, the small life of Sri Ramakrishna for deep inspiration you can keep. Raman Maharshi ke talks hai, choti pustake bhi hai, self realization is a book and an introduction to his life. Keep these books in your room, you will see the impact on your mind, you will live a life at a deeper level. So, his main method was this koham, who am I? And you know the conclusion he came to? As a result of this inquiry, my existence is evident with or without thought, my existence is evident with or without body. So, I am the self beyond body and mind, functioning through a body and mind. He came to this realization through Koham. So, that is why I am telling you, these are all very, very profound techniques to help you live at, a, at the deepest level of existence, to en really enjoy life. Otherwise, you are missing life, I am telling you, getting caught up in a hundred meaningless obsessions. So, mind tab stop in karega, agar you, if you do not remain in touch with these things. So, this is Koham, then Mahavakya Vichar. Uh, agar mein isme jau na, it will require two more classes, so I will not go into this. It is a very profound something. See, Mahavakyas are actually uh, very pithy statements you will find in uh, Upanishads, which directly tell you the equation between you and Brahman, you and God. Like Aham Brahmasmi, Tattva Masi, Pragnanam Brahma, Ayamatma Brahma, these are the four Mahavakyas in four different Upanishads. If you just meditate on this and analyze them, there is a way to do that because it takes time. You will get a thorough understanding of your consciousness and how it is related to the Supreme Consciousness. This is Mahavakya Vichar. Then you have Panchakosha Vichar, which is analysis of the different bodies you wear. Aap soch rahe ho, ye sirf, this is the only body I am wearing. This is what is called body, is not it? Hmm? This flesh and blood, this is called body. But you know, in Vedant, even the pranmai kosh is a body you are wearing, the vital energy sheath. Where does your pran flow? Agar is sharir ko slice karo, will you find pran? You won't find. If I slice those wires, do you think I will find electricity? You won't find. Why? It, is, it exists at a subtle level, you cannot see it. Can you see electricity, anybody? Anybody has seen? Hmm? Lightning you have seen, you have not seen electricity. You see the manifestations of electricity, so also you see the manifestations of pran, you do not see pran. So, isile uska sheath jo hai, where it exists, it is called pranmai kosh. Then there is manomai kosh, where, you, where does your mind exist? Here in physical space? No. So, where your mind is functioning, the plane of thought, that is called manomai kosh. So, you are wearing so many bodies, you see, not just physical body. Then there is Vijnan Mai Kosh, which means where your intelligence functions, your awareness and will come into operation. That is the Vijnan Mai Kosh. Fir Anand Mai Kosh hai, the bliss or causal sheath. Uske baad hai Atma, Atma Vastu, the self. So, this is called Panchakosha Vichara in the in Vedant. Iska matlab hai, just analyzing the all that you are wearing you will finally come to who you are without all this that you are wearing. Are you the cloth you are wearing? No, you are wearing your cloth, so also you are wearing these bodies. Lekin identify kar gaye, what to do? Hmm? You have identified with the cloth you are wearing. Many fools are doing this, is not it? My style defines me. <laughs> My cloth defines me. So, you are allowing matter to define you, what to do? So, the point is this, through all this vichar, you see techniques of inquiry, you can go into the real nature of your existence. These are the Vedic meditations, a Buddhist meditation. There are many more, Dekhe, space hai, isle mein nahi, nahi dala hai. so many types of vichar are there. Maybe at the end of this course, I will give you sample of Vedantic inquiry how profound and powerful it is. So many types are there, 
you can take up any one and practice it. Hmm? But here we will this is just sample what I am giving you. Then the Buddhist types of meditations are there. Where was Buddhism born? Indian. It is also a part of the Indian tradition, isn't it? Buddha was a Hindu. Badme he went against the Vedic dharma, so it was called Buddhist. It became Buddhist. But he was born a Hindu. So it these are all systems of for um, of religion, they are religions basically, but they give you systems of meditations and inquiry which will lead you to self knowledge. Hmm? So, yaha par Buddhist meditations may be here, they care shamata, mindfulness. Mindfulness, aapko pata hai, I have already told you, isn't it? Huh? It is not being mindful, but being just mindful, uncluttered mind where you are fully aware is mindfulness, you are at the present moment. Hmm? So, this is a very vipassana all fall under this category. Hmm. Then there is metta which is meditation on loving kindness. Hmm. You know Buddhist monks they practice this so much and so beautifully uh, once there was an experiment conducted I think it was in New York University only. Jaha par they, uh, they put electrodes on many Tibetan monks and tried to find out their state of what uh, waves they radiate. EEG tracking, what waves they radiate in the state of meditation. So, electrodes and then they were asked to go into meditation. So, one monk went into a state of deep meditation with the thought of loving kindness. Ye wo practice karte hai, just thinking of mercy, compassion, loving kindness and you know his entire prefrontal cortex ignited. He is radiating very high waves alpha waves and theta waves because just the thought of loving kindness has ignited his own whole brain as it were and blissful the entire demeanor became full of bliss a different energy he is radiating as it were. So, you see the practice of meditation will make you like that just one thought and spark this is these meditations so powerful yeah actually experiment hua Dalai Lama only had sent these monks. So, they understood you know the, the people who were measuring the scientists they concluded he must be the happiest guy on the planet. Because <laughs> ek thought se jiska man itna prafull ho jata hai, he must be a very lucky guy they said. So, the third is vipassana. Uh, vipassana are also techniques for you know focus on breathing to develop self awareness. Then contemplations of various kinds are there. See, I can't go into that. We don't have time. Hmm? Then reflections on this pratitya samutpad. It, it is actually a, a philosophical concept, which means dependent origination. We don't have time for that. This will also take one class if I go into that. Hmm? Then there are post Vedic meditations like shabda aparoksh. See, meditation on mahavakya will bring you insight into what it is stating. Aparokshanubhuti it will bring you that is called Shabda Aparoksh. When the mind is ripe enough just the hearing of Mahavakya from the words of the Guru from the mouth of the Guru will lead to this state. This is called Shabda Aparoksh. It is a very elevated state. It is a uh, you can say the culmination of a lot of practice Shabda Aparoksh. It gives you direct insight into the nature of reality just the Mahavakya. Then there is aham graho pasna techniques. You see, in the Vedas are full of these techniques. These are also meditation techniques, but post Vedic age they were practiced all the more. So we have put it under post Vedic. Aham graho pasna itself means catching the aham. What is aham? I. So how do you catch that I? Who am I? Through this these techniques. Upasna to catch the aham is aham graho pasna. How do you catch it? through meditations like imagine a point of light in your heart that is the light of your awareness, but you will now identify with that point of light not with this body and mind and your meditation will proceed like that. Gradually you will understand that that light which is me is nothing but awareness. This is Aham Grahopasana. You are identifying with something and calling it Aham which leads to directly into self the knowledge of the self. 
So, I am giving you small uh, bites of what you find in all these meditations. Jitna practice karoge, one new world will open, I can tell you that. Hmm. Then there is yogic meditations. See, the word yoga comes even in the Upanishads, even in the Katopanishad you will find, which means although it, it in the Shad Darshan it developed as a different philosophy apart from Vedant as a psychological philosophy, but you will find the yogic techniques in as part of Vedas in the Upanishads. So, it, they sort of develop together in a sense, yoga and Vedant. Hmm? Are you getting the point? So, isle bahut sare yogic techniques of dhyan developed in the post Vedic age. They have their roots in the Vedas in the Vedic age and they developed in the post Vedic age. The common practices of dhyan jo hum kehte hai na, they are all from here. Hmm? Fir Kashmir Shaivism, aapne suna hai Kashmir Shaivism? No, you hear about Kashmir only for this. Kashmir mein kitna virat spiritual tradition hai aapko pata hai? enormous techniques they have Kashmir Shaivism has of meditation, of stillness, of uh, ye, the Shaivism. The, the philosophy of Kashmir Shaivism is so profound and comes so close to Advait Vedant that really great yogis were produced out of this. And abhi bhi aapko jaga, jaga bis, at some points you will find the tradition going on. So, Kashmir Shaivism, the beauty of it is very profound, very close to Vedant and great proliferation of techniques in Kashmir Shaivism. So, kabhi samay mile to aap thoda kuch research karna iske baare mein, abhi nahi, abhi to samay hai hi nahi. <laughs> then tantric meditations also, a number of meditations are there. The paradigm I gave you, Shat Chakra model, that is also from the Tantra. Hmm. Then Kundalini Yoga. This is similar to that Shat Chakra, almost the same. Hmm. Ye bhi aapko milega, post Vedic age, all these were tried to understand the, the way your own system functions, to understand the equations between vitality, vital energy and awareness, to understand how to unfold the highest awareness. All these techniques were developed. Then you have Pratika Upasana, you know it very well. Wo jo meditation on Om hai, wo bhi Pratika Upasana hai. So, use of symbols like Om, idols, uh, ye jo ling we worship, shivling ko hum worship karte hai na, that is also a symbol of Shiva, which is the supreme state of consciousness. Please see, uh, it is all symbolic. Shalagram, Shila hum worship karte hai, natural objects, all of these were used as symbols for the highest. When you worship them and focus on them, you will be introduced to the consciousness of the highest. So, this is all medium like. So, so many meditation techniques you see. Then you have reflections and contemplations on thousand objects you will find in, in Hinduism, is not it? Almost anything can be worshipped in Hindu way of thought, if you look upon it as a manifestation of the divine. Are you getting the point? Mm. It is not idol worship as they say, you are not worshipping the stone there, you are worshipping God as the stone, manifested as the stone, because that is your way to approach God, it is a means. You are not worshipping merely the stone. So, you must understand, you must understand this first of all. Hai na? Iske baare mein agar kuch bhi idea nahi ho, to a lot of confusion will reign in your mind. Then you have modern techniques of meditation. Sagun Upasana, aapko pata hai? Sagun Upasana essentially means uh, worshipping God with attributes. Agar hum straight away nirgun mein chale jaye, so you will have no idea. Ideation will stop. So, isiliya nirgun upasana difficult hai. Sagun upasana means you start thinking of the great noble qualities of God. So, your concentration will be easier. This is sagun upasana. Nirgun upasana means when you are able to get into the in touch with the nature of God, then you do not need to think about mere attributes. Hmm. Jaysa now if I see you only as a good person or bad person, nice person or not so nice person, I am only thinking of attributes, but if I see you as a piece of soul, as a, as, a, as a life, as awareness, which wears a body and mind which can be differently conditioned, variously conditioned, then it is a different way of seeing you. Vaise hi Bhagawan ko bhi, agar aap completely nirgun maan lo, without attributes, 
then that is called nirguna upasana you worship him as he is as pure brahman pure being but usually people can't conceive of this isiliya saguna upasana hai you think of him as with attributes hmm you think of him as being so uh, you even give him a form sakar upasana hai and having all these noble qualities of having full of love full of power full of compassion and then you relate no that's why all these upasanas are there vipassana has branched out into very many things so it is also a part of modern meditation technique then you have sakar dhyan bhagwan ko ek aakar dekar hum poochte hain hai na hmm? why because you are also in an aakar and identified with it so you need to worship a god with form before you can transcend it when you your consciousness transcends your body you will be able to worship him as he is as nirgun nirakar are you getting it hmm? jab tak hum yahan par badh hai na as long as we are confined to this body consciousness and identity of me being this particular individual you can only worship god with form actually psychological law hai ye hmm? so that is why you have sakar dhyan not that god has uh, becomes has become sakar and standing it is your necessity your constitutional necessity and he will manifest in that form and lift your mind hmm? so sakar dhyan hai nirakar dhyan hai leela dhyan hai leela you know very well thinking of his divine play of the divine attributes of god of the lives of incarnations these are all very practical aids to keeping your mind at a higher level आप जिस पर ध्यान करोगे ना उसके टेंडेंसीज एट्रीब्यूट्स आप में आ जाएंगे अब आप किस पर ध्यान करते हो यू आई नो व्हाट यू ध्यान यू डू सो दैट दो एट्रीब्यूट्स आर कमिंग इनटू योर लाइफ नाउ इफ यू शिफ्ट योर अटेंशन टू समथिंग डिवाइन लाइफ्स ऑफ ग्रेट पीपल आई टोल्ड यू कीप दीज बुक्स इन योर होम सो योर अटेंशन इज ऑन दैट नेचुरली दो एट्रीब्यूट विल कम इन टू योर लाइफ into your mind naturally so yahi leela dhyan hai it's easy thinking of the life incidents of great personalities to ye karna hi hai lekin ha huh? if you are inspired by the great you will become great if you are inspired by the cheap you will become cheap are you understanding this law to so be careful then vignan bhairav vignan bhairav is a actual technique for reaching shiva consciousness so hum it's an actual technique i can't do it here but i'm telling you it's a it's a, it's a tremendous technique then of course transcendental meditations are there mahesh yogi ka naam ap, apne suna hoga so those meditations which take you naturally into the transcendent state of consciousness so all these are the techniques of meditation available now i will go to the final portion of this theory you see how does yoga see the human problem see you must catch this point kyunki ye aapke test mein aa sakta hai okay how does yoga philosophy actually see the human problem whatever problems we have how do they see it they see the human being as a coming together of purusha and prakriti which means purusha means consciousness me our own consciousness which we are actually and prakriti is everything that is not consciousness which means our mind it means our body it means all the senses and motor organs it means this world of objects 24 cosmic principles everything is prakriti only consciousness is the purusha everything else is prakriti now when these two come together purusha and prakriti you have the manifestation of life so consciousness has got mixed up with that which is jada not conscious so yog actually means the separation of purusha and prakriti which means you are extracting consciousness from the jada vastu from the mind ha huh? so when purusha and prakriti are come together avidya is generated this is how they will put it ignorance comes why because the conscious and non conscious has mixed up it will lead to kleshas kleshas are the afflictions of your mind rag dvesh abhinivesh asmita anger attachments 
here rag means actually attachment rag dvesh hatred abhinivesh fear fear of death and all this and then uh, asmita ego avidya ignorance all this will come into your life because purusha and prakriti have come together you are mistaking mind to be the self you are mistaking body to be the self so self knowledge is not there the knowledge of purusha is not there you are mistaking prakriti to be purusha so that is why the kleshas have come this is how yoga sees the human problem so then what is the remedy ashtang yoga when you practice these steps of yoga and come to samyama what will happen you will be able to separate consciousness from that which is not consciousness isiliya samadhi the result of ashtang yoga is samadhi it is called samadhi matram in by patanjali which means that samadhi which you get as a result of ashtang yoga but which is not the end iske baad you know this is only the basic scheme of yoga sutras iske baad ek advanced scheme hai but to get this basic only is so difficult in experience hmm but you must have a general knowledge that is why i am giving you these slides see if the question is how does yoga see the human problem this is how it sees it the coming together of purusha and prakriti consciousness and that which is non conscious by itself see your mind now i am saying is non conscious by itself because mind is prakriti hai na huh? so it is is it non conscious by itself according to all these philosophies you must remember consciousness is always apart from mind but reflects in the mind so mind appears to have become conscious because your mind is always not conscious to the same degree it fluctuates that itself means consciousness is not its property it is borrowed property usko extrinsic property of mind kehte hain so consciousness is only the self it belongs to the purusha and mind borrows consciousness and becomes conscious that's why you have various degrees of consciousness you know now uh, when you go back to your room after all these classes you will be so exhausted only partially conscious fir aap jo khaoge then for some time unconscious <laughs> then again tomorrow morning when you wake up again conscious so if consciousness was a property of your mind these states would not occur the fact is consciousness reflects in your mind to the extent mind is clear it will reflect that much consciousness abhi mind clear hai isliye sabhi jagrat avastha mein ho aur achhi tarah sun rahe ho after some time it won't be like that isn't it so are you getting the point intrinsic property means what is always constantly with the thing consciousness is not intrinsic property of your mind please note this yahi keh rahe hain with all this figurative language you know this is all it's your own experience please check and see koi theory nahi hai ye hmm? so this is the basic scheme of patanjali yoga sutras purusha and prakriti came together generated avidya so the the basic density of our mind no clarity un, full of unnecessary thought so many worries unproductive worries and very busy mind which i can't stop this is avidya fundamentally it leads to kleshas all sorts of emotional afflictions acha nahi lagta hai and uh, bored ho jate ho and ye nahi acha lagta wo nahi acha lagta and mind is flitting from thought to thought all kleshas attachments fears worries everything so the remedy then is ashtang yoga isko practice karo ye sab clear ho jayega ashtang yoga we discussed hmm? those who missed out the last class please see the video hmm then you go to uh, the the result of ashtang yoga the final destination is samadhi as a result you are able to separate purusha and prakriti hmm as a result of samadhi which means such total focus on the goal that you understand your own pragna is generated you know you understand your own nature is pure awareness it is not the mind so with the experience of this samadhi matram pragna rises higher awareness rises so that's why the yoga after this is called sampragnat yoga so that is part of the advanced scheme of patanjali yoga sutras dekho bahut sari cheeze maine condense karke aise sab bana ke aapko de rahi hu 
because how can yoga is an enormous system I am telling you, in 4 5 lectures you cannot conclude it. But somehow I am trying so that you do not miss out on the essential knowledge. Hmm. So, you see the next slide it will oh sorry, yes this slide is the advanced scheme of Patanjali Yoga Sutras. Once Pragna is generated by Samadhi, you enter Sampragnyat Yoga. The result of Sampragnyat Yoga will be Ritambara Pragna, which means a, an even more deepened version of that Pragna, which it is actually called truth bearing intuition. It will give you insight into the nature of the Purusha, your own being, pure consciousness. As a result, you develop Viveka Khyati. Look at the diagram there. Vivek Khyati means your ability to distinguish between awareness and buddhi, buddhi sattva. Your ability to distinguish between your own real nature as awareness and the higher intelligence that is reflecting it and claiming to be I. So, it is a tremendous state of consciousness. Please understand. May I say simple words may bold rain upko. Then, as a result of Vivekhyati, you enter Asam Pragnat Yoga, which means you have gone far beyond the ordinary pragna. And as a result, you get the complete knowledge of self, of the purusha, self-knowledge is got. So, you leave behind prakriti. Separation of Purusha and Prakriti is what is called Kaivalya, liberation. In the sense, the self is liberated from the clutches of Prakriti. This is what is called self knowledge or Mukti. Traditional terms may see Mukti kehte hai, Kaivalya. Iska matlab hai self knowledge. The self is now liberated from Prakriti, what it is not, but it got identified with. From that, it is liberated. So, aaj bhi agar aap, you go to the rural life of India, you will see find people who will tell you, jivan ka maksad hai mukti. Ye sab unko pata nahi hai, lekin unko pata hai ye kuch aisi cheez hai, so elevating and so high that that only can be the goal of human life. This is the filterate of our great spiritual traditions. That even the common man is able to say that mukti jivan ka maksad hai. Mercedes jivan ka maksad nahi hai, mukti jivan ka maksad hai. <laughs> Mercedes can be on the way. So, the point is this, the what they are speaking of here is the highest level of your own existence. You are capable of this. Isko abhi aap, aap, you are just getting introduced to it. A little bit of yoga, you will understand it better. But you must have some knowledge of the great spiritual traditions of India. Hmm? Yoga is the way to penetrate into your own being, to get self-knowledge. And who is not wanting self-knowledge, tell me. The problem is, ye jnana available nahi hai. Isliye ab YouTube mein da dal de rahe Bas. Let anybody who wants it, let them have it. You know, 100 years back, this was not there. Neither the technology was there, nor the tendency to do this was there. This was very esoteric knowledge. Himalay me jana padta tha. Aur wo bhi bohat varsho tak tapasya karne ke baad thoda kuch bolte the. Ab aapko IIT ke classroom me bol rahe hain. Why? Everyone, this knowledge should be available to everyone. You will only take and use as much as you can. Just like how you, if you have a whole 10 course meal in front of you, you will only take as much as your stomach will fill. Or chinta karne ki zarurati nahi hai isliye. This should be available to everyone. Vivekanand started this, please understand. You do not know the contribution he has made to your nation. This knowledge was considered very esoteric and not available to the common man at all. Isliye wo occult kind of idea is there about yoga. There is nothing occult about it. There is nothing superstitious about it. There is nothing unscientific about it. It is purely scientific, logical, rational and something you can do. In the first person only you can understand these things through practice. But the theory you should know. This is the whole point. So, today's class we will stop here. We have uh, come to the end of what exactly 
the aim of yoga is and how it is studied, what the techniques are. You can do your own exploration on this, uh, find out things for yourself. Tomorrow onwards, we will be going into mind management techniques and the practice of pratyahar and dharana. This is what I want to do for you uh, before uh, in the next two sessions. So, it is something you have to do and practice even when uh, the classes are not there. Mind management techniques will be given to you and practice of pratyahar and dharana will be given to you. The more you practice, the better knowledge of this you will get. Is this clear? Huh? So, practice nahi karenge to bas this is another thought construct you know like a vritti. Wo ud jayegi. Jab physics and mathematics and uh, nuclear physics andar jayega tab ye ud jayega. So, if practice is there this will stabilize and you will understand it is part of life. It is not a philosophy of life. It is a way of life. A way of a better life towards a better life. Hmm? So, we will stop the class here.